Now that we have the structure of our course ready, we can begin adding content. Now that we have the structure of our course ready, we can begin adding content and customizing our course. First, turn editing on. We have the option to hide or delete blocks on the course page. To do so, navigate to the block you wish to hide or delete. Select the action drop down menu and choose whether you wish to hide or delete the block. When hidden, the block will be greyed out when in edit mode. Let's turn editing off and view the course as a student in order to see what the student will see. Select switch role, student. We can see the block no longer appears for a student. Let's go back to our normal role. and turn editing on. If you wish to delete a block, navigate to the action drop down menu and select delete. Select yes. The block is now deleted. Before we begin adding resources to our course, let's first take a look at the default filters. We can find the default filters by navigating to the course administration menu and selecting filters. Filters apply to all text content within your learning management system, such as user profiles, resources, pages, forum posts, and more. Filters process the text contained within your site and automatically change formatting. They can change words, add links, and embed media automatically. For example, the activity names auto linking filter for example, the activity name's auto-linking filter will create links to an activity wherever the name of the activity is written in text within the same course page as the activity appears in. This makes it easy for students to access the activity being referenced. Filters are enabled at a site level and can be removed as needed at a course or activity level. Here are the standard filters that are applied as a default to our course. Should you wish to change any of the default filter settings, you can do so here. If you're happy with the default filter settings, you can leave them as they are. Let's return to our course page. Now that we've reviewed our blocks and filters, we're ready to start adding content. To add content to your course, select Add an Activity or Resource. The Activity Chooser will provide you with a list of different activities and resources that you can use to build your course. For now, let's focus on the resources available to add. By selecting a resource, you are provided with a brief description on the right-hand side of the Activity Chooser. Should you require any further information about the resource, select More Help. By selecting more help, you're taken to the appropriate Moodle doc page for that resource where you can find more information. To exit Moodle docs, simply close the window. For our first resource, I'd like to add a file. Select file, then add. Enter the name of your file. Add a description of the file if you wish to do so. Select the file. Select choose. Give the file a name
and select Upload this file. There are additional settings you can customise should you wish to do so. For example, Display allows you to choose whether or not you would like the file to open in a separate window or to be opened within the course page. Additionally, you may choose to force the student to download if at any point you're unsure of what a setting means. Simply hover your mouse over the question mark to access more information. To close the information, simply press the cross. I'd like this to be opened in a separate pop-up window, so I'll select In Pop-up. There are further options to customise this file, however I'm quite happy with the default settings, so by going down to the bottom of the page, I can select Save and Return to Course. You can see my file now appears on the course. Should I wish to change the name of the file, I can do so by using the pencil icon. Once you're happy with the new file name, select Enter. Let's add another resource. Select Add an Activity or Re I'm now going to add a folder. Scroll down to the bottom and select Folder, then Add. Give your folder a name. and a description if you'd like to do so. You can then begin adding content to your folder. Select the Add icon and navigate to the files you wish to add. Select Choose. Add as many files as you like. Again, you can choose how you would like your files to appear from the drop down menu. I'm happy for mine to open in a separate page, so I'll leave that as the default setting. Once you're happy with the files that you have loaded into your folder, select Save and Return to Course. Your folder now appears in your course. To make any changes to your folder, you can do so by selecting from the Edit menu and Edit Settings. You can continue to add files to your folder or delete files as required. If you don't have any changes to make, simply scroll to the bottom of the page and select Cancel. Let's add another resource. Select Add an Activity or Resource. This time I'd like to add a URL. Select URL and Add. Name the URL If you know the URL's address, you can type it in directly into the field You can provide a description of your URL should you wish to do so. Under Appearance, you can select whether or not you wish your URL to display in a new window, in a pop-up window, or embedded within the course. I would like my URL to display in a new window, so I'll select New Window. There are other settings you can use to customise your URL, however in most instances the default settings are suitable. Once you're happy with your settings, 
select Save and Return to Course. The URL now appears within the course and when selected, opens the website in a new window. Let's add another resource. Select Add an Activity or Resource. This time, I'd like to add a page. Select Add. Give your page a name. And a description if you wish to do so. If you would like to display the description on the course page, select Display Description on Course Page. You can now add content to your page. To access more editing options, select Show More Buttons. You have the option to include hyperlinks, images, videos, and other documents. Once you have entered in your page content, select Save and Return to Course. Your page now appears within the course. If you would like to change the order of the resources on your page, simply drag and drop them to your preferred location. Let's add another resource. Select Add an Activity or Resource. This time, I'd like to use a label. Select Add. Labels allow you to embed video or sound directly into your course page. They can also help you break up a long list of activities or resources within your course, or allow you to add short descriptions to the course page. I'd like to use this label to provide some further information about how to complete the course. Enter in the content of your label into the label text box. If you wish to make any changes to the formatting of your text, you can do so using the options available. For example, you might wish to bold some of your text. You also have the option to use bullets, insert hyperlinks, images, videos and other resources. You can use the options available here as required. Once you're happy with your label text, Scroll to the bottom of the page and select Save and Return to Course. Your label now appears on the course page. Again, should you wish to change the order of any of the activities or resources within your page, you can do so using the arrow icons. You may also wish to change the appearance of the activities or resources on your page, which you can do so by selecting Edit and Move Right. If you'd like to move it back, simply select Move Left. Let's add another resource. Select Add an Activity or Resource. This time, let's add a book. Select Add. The book resource allows you to add multi-page resources 
that are broken up by chapters or subchapters. First, name your book. Add a description if you wish to do so. Under appearance, you can select how you wish your chapters to be formatted, either no formatting, numbers, bullets, or indented. Also choose the style of navigation. Once you're happy with the settings you have made, select save and return to course. Your book now appears within the course. To add content to your book, select the book and begin adding your chapters. Enter your chapter title. Add any content you wish to your chapter. Once you're happy with the content you have added, select Save Changes. Your first chapter has been successfully added. You also have the option to import chapters for your books by selecting Import Chapter from the Book Administration options under the Administration menu. Let's go back to our course page. A handy feature when creating courses is the recycle bin function. Should you delete an activity or resource, it will automatically be placed in the recycle bin. Let's take a look. Select yes to delete. The recycle bin appears under the course administration menu. The item I deleted appears within the recycle bin. To restore the item, simply select Restore. The item has now been restored. If we navigate back to our course, we can see the item appearing on our course page.